G'day Dark Realmers, it's horror author and illustrator Michael J. Elliott here with you again and in today's episode of the Dark Realm Diaries we're going to be looking at Jeffrey Convict's book and movie The Sentinel. Let's get started. You know, one of my favourite pastimes when I was a lot younger was to get my pocket money or allowances um, Dark Realm is in the North um, uh, America would say and head down to my favourite shop in my local town and that was Mr Browser's bookshop and he had stacks and stacks of comics on the floor as well as some great, great rows and rows of books and I'd sit there for hours going through comics and oh, agonising over which ones to get with my limited you know, resource finances and I'd also get books too and I was starting to build up a really great collection from some of the wonderful old titles he had and that's where I came across this uh, novel Dark Realmers, The Sentinel and believe me it was one of the best purchases I ever made. Now Jeffrey Convitz wrote this novel in 1974 and it went on to become a New York Times bestseller and today it's considered a classic in horror. It's um, very creepy, very atmospheric and it's one of those ones that if you like um, the sort of atmosphere of um, books and movies like Rosemary's Baby you're going to love this because it's not straight out horror, it's um, creepy, mystery, um, what's going to happen, who are these people, all those sort of twists and turns that you generally get to find um, in really good writing and really good movies you'll find here in The Sentinel. Now the story concerns um, Alison Parker who's a top uh, New York model um, and um, in the movie she's played by Christine Raines and um, she's very successful, um, seen on TV commercials and so forth, but she has a lot of neuroses and um, she also has a troubled past because of her relationship with her dad um, and she's tried to commit suicide in the past. Now she um, has a relationship happening with um, Michael Farmer who's a lawyer and he's played by a very young Chris Sarandon in the movie and um, she is his mistress and um, when Michael's wife commits suicide um, she feels so guilty that she tries to commit suicide as well. Anyway it's a fresh beginning for her and things are looking wonderful but she wants her own apartment and she finds a nice little uh, apartment which is owned by the um, Catholic Church, the New York Diocese and she moves in and um, the realtor uh, who in the book it explains very cleverly at the end that she's actually a nun but we don't know this at the time of course but it's not gotten into in the movie explains look there's no no other people here except Father O'Hanlon who lives upstairs he's an old blind priest and he's retired now and just the um, you know the church looks after his needs and he won't be any problem and so she thinks this is wonderful it's going to be wonderful peace and quiet and everything well things change she starts getting really bad headaches um, she starts collapsing um, and she's wondering why she's starting to feel sick she doesn't know what's causing this and it's not long into the book where she gets to meet some neighbors and she thinks this is strange you know I've got top you know, there's, there's um, you know, Father O'Hanlon lives upstairs, you know, oh well, um, you know, and she meets a wonderful um, man um, who's brilliantly played by the wonderful um, Burgess Meredith, who's very quirky and he has a pet cat and a bird, Mortimer and Joey, and he treats those as humans and he comes into her apartment and says, oh, I love what you've done with the place, rah, rah, rah. And from there she meets two other neighbours who live downstairs. Now these are really weird, um, creepy um, couple, they're a lesbian and um, while one of the um, neighbours goes to get her coffee, the other one starts masturbating in front of Alison who is really shocked, you know, being a Catholic and so forth. And 
you'll be surprised to know, Dark Realm, is that the character in the movie that plays that part, which is only a very tiny part, is played by Beverly D'Angelo. Oh, come on, Dark Realm, as you know Beverly D'Angelo, yes. Mrs. Griswold, you know, Wobby's World? Yes, that's her. Anyway, she um, gets invited to a birthday party for Burgess Meredith's cat, which is really weird, but she thinks she'll go along. And she meets some other people there. And it's, um, you know, she's quite happy there. You know, she's she's having a, a few problems with her modeling career. Uh, Michael suggests that maybe she's overworking and so forth like that. But um, what we find out is that um, she's having trouble sleeping at night. And what happens is she's hearing thumping and noises coming from upstairs and she talks to the realtor and she says look um, I don't want to be a bad tenant or anything or complain but the, the people upstairs are making too much noise I can't sleep at night and the realtor says well um, I'm sorry but there's no neighbours you're the only one here apart from Father O'Halloran so that makes you start thinking now, Dark Realms, it's at this point in the story where it gets a little bit difficult for me to um, review without giving too much away, and I hate doing that. But there's one scene um, where Alison is confronted by her father in the building, and she stabs him and runs out into the street screaming, which is really strange because she was at the hospital three weeks ago when he died. Now, the police start investigating and think, well, you know, like she's had some mental issues, you know, perhaps she all, you know, it's all her own blood over her. Maybe, you know, she's had a breakdown or, or something like that. And um, you'll be um, interested to see that there's actually um, one of the um, police officers um, who doesn't have a very, very big part is a very young Christopher Walken. And um, so it's interesting spotting him in that too. Now, Michael is convinced that the, the church or, you know, the, the realtor, they know something they're not letting it on. And he wants to talk to Father O'Halloran upstairs. So he goes to the diocese to seek permission and the priest says, no, I'm sorry, it's, that's just out of the question, you can't do that, you know, he's he's infirm and so forth and so forth. Well, Michael becomes convinced there's some sort of cover-up going on and he hires a, um, a lock uh, pick, uh, safe cracker, to break in and look at the files. And the files reveal something very interesting that Father O'Halloran hasn't been the only one living in that apartment. There was a nun there before and a, a, a priest before that going way back. And I can't say too much more, but it's one of those stories, Dark Realmers, where just like in Rosemary's Baby, where Mia Farrow slowly but surely becomes convinced there's a conspiracy theory or something's not quite right, that's the whole feeling you get with the Sentinel. And one of the great things about this is that uh, Jeffrey Convitz, who wrote the book, also produced the movie and he wrote and adapted the screenplay. So it's very, very faithful to its, uh, to its origins. Now, it's full of great scenes, a lot of creep, a lot of um, dark, psychologically creepy, um, you know, scenes of um, making you wonder whether, you know, this is all in her mind or is something else going on. Um, and um, like I said, I can't reveal too much because it will just spoil it. But all I'll, I'll just say is the word hell. Okay, now that's where I'm going to leave it. Okay, because it's, it's far too good to spoil. Now, the book is freely available. You can still get that at Amazon on Kindle and I'm sure on other ebooks. And um, it's also available still in paperback. And there's a sequel to The Sentinel 2 called The Guardian. And that's um, the continuation of what happens at the end of the book and also the movie. Now, The Guardian didn't get turned into a movie, unfortunately, but uh, Jeffrey Convitz 
who's uh, busy writing a lot of other things at the moment. He's, he's writing a historical novel at the moment, has promised that he's going to be releasing another in the uh, Sentinel uh, series, um, a final one to, to wrap it up as a trilogy. And that's going to be available in ebook. Now, I've got no idea when that'll be available, but I'm really looking forward to that. I was so chilled out by the book. Um, I enjoyed the movie. Now, um, it's very hard to encapsulate um, all the intricacies and, and the delicacies um, of, of a, um, a, a book in, you know, one and a half hours. Um, it's, you know, a battle that directors constantly have um, and it involves a lot of rewriting, a lot of let's, let's do this scene, no, let's not do that, let's do this. And the film does, uh, you know, does suffer for that in some effects. Now, there's one scene where, as I mentioned, um, Michael breaks in and um, with this um, safe cracker. Now, the fact that this safe cracker takes like 30 seconds to break into, you know, the, the building itself and and uh, the the, um, the the locks of the um, you know files and everything is a bit you know a bit hard to believe. They could have you know sort of worked that scene a little bit more. But apart from that, it is definitely chilling, and um, it's one that you should have on your DVD shelf or maybe just to borrow. Okay, so check that out. I'm sure you're going to love that Dark Realmers, okay? Well, that's it for my review of Sentinel. I really wish I could tell you more. I really do, because it's one of my favorite books. Um, the movie, like I said, I enjoyed, but it's not one of my favorite movies. I enjoyed the book a lot more. But having said that, Dark Realmers, now it doesn't matter whether you're a visual person or a reader. Um, because both were written by the author themselves. So you'll get the story, no problems, and you won't be missing out on either. But I do recommend the book because it does explain a little bit more. There's a, there's a few more intricacies there that um, you can't get across in the movie, okay? Well, I hope you've enjoyed that Dark Realmers. Like I said, it's one of my favorite books. Check it out. You can actually watch the movie here uh, there's a few versions of it available here on YouTube, okay? And it's also available on DVD. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find it here in Australia, but I might have to do a few more um, searches for that. Okay, well, like I said, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching The Dark Realm Diaries. Now, if you love book and movie trivia, uh, reviews, uh, myths and legends, all the things from The Dark Realm, please um, think about hitting the subscribe button and um, chatting to us. Um, we love hearing your comments. Um, I love your ideas and your suggestions. And I'm more than um, happy to work on any ideas you've got for the Dark Realm Diaries. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Um, this is Michael J. Elliott saying thank you so much for watching me. And um, I really do appreciate um, all your support. It means a whole lot to me. Um, and um, I, I really do enjoy it. Every time I get one of your comments, it just blows me away. So thank you very much for that. And I'll see you next time. And remember what I always say, Dark Realmers, stay in the light. Bye for now.